to have the foresight to see the possibility of this museum in a small town like Hickory was just unbelievable almost. And he just had a dream that Hickory could do this and he made it possible. Born in 1911 and raised in Hickory, North Carolina, Paul Austin Whitener found very little time to explore his artistic gift. As a football player in high school and in his college years on a football scholarship to Duke, Paul was referred to by many as the Galloping Ghost, a nickname that stuck until sports-related injuries ended his college career. It was at this time that Paul began to develop another talent, one that would give him renowned recognition as an artist and would ultimately leave a legacy for many generations to discover. Well, Paul, out of college, worked for a North Carolina transportation agency in mapping roads and where roads should go, which is uh, how he met Mickey doing work in little Switzerland in the mountains. Paul spent the summer and we fell right much in love. <laughs> yeah, immediately. So uh, we sort of hit it off right to begin with. And Paul asked me to borrow my art kit and he started painting. And from that day on, there wasn't much of a way to get him away from the easel or painting a foggy morning in, in the mountains. A year later in 1936, Paul married Mildred McKinney, Mickey as she's better known for, a passionate art student who encouraged Paul to explore his artistic gift. In 1940, the Whiteners attended an art exhibit in Asheville, North Carolina, where Paul met the renowned portrait painter Wilford Seymour Conroe. Upon much petitioning, Paul convinced Conroe to instruct him in portrait painting. Although it wasn't his practice, Conroe was so impressed with Paul's work that he accepted him as his only student. Over the course of the next 14 years, under the guidance of Conroe, Paul became much in demand as a portraitist. But his real love as an artist always remained the mountains. Paul absolutely loved the mountains. Uh, they were his passion. The mountains and the cloud formations, and he was driven to paint and draw. He scribbled on everything. He scribbled on envelopes, did beautiful little drawings on envelopes and on letters and anything he could get his hands on. Um, he grew so rapidly as an artist, but uh, his colors were just fabulous. Paul, as I said, was, was, was a unique individual, and virtually every living moment of his life, uh, he was either thinking of or painting. Now, Paul painted with his tongue. <laughs> every move he made, I can see him now with the brush here, and as long as he would make, as he would make a swipe, he always painting with his tongue. So to, to uh, answer your question about what art and his painting meant to him, other than Mickey, virtually everything. A lot of people in many of his mountain landscapes can notice that there's a, a signature little tree, a little twisted tree that, that, that we like to call a signature tree. Uh, very often on a rocky slope or, or a cliff. And he uh, used trees a lot to uh, establish perspective in paintings as well. And as Whitener's technique evolved over time, his style of the 1930s changed to the use of a deeper tone palette with heavier brush strokes. By the late 1940s, portraits as well as landscapes showed increasing evidence of reflected light and color. The most dramatic change in his work came after surgery for a brain tumor. After the brain tumor and he lost the use of his right hand, he couldn't not produce art. It was impossible for him not to produce art, so he started with his left hand, with the forerunner of Magic Markers, which was Cato Inc., and just did these very uh, detailed little drawings. and. It was just amazing what he learned to do with his left hand. After initially using a type of felt pen, he gained confidence to use other mediums in a looser style. In the last few years of his life, Paul used his imagination to create his more abstract style of the late 1950s. 
It was during his years of study and practice that Paul often discussed the idea of an art museum with his friend and mentor, Wilford Seymour Conroe. Encouraging Paul to pursue the collection and promotion of works by American artists, Mickey Conroe and later A. Alex Shuford, a local industrialist, helped Paul put the plan in motion to organize an art association in Hickory with a primary focus on American art. In November 1943, with neither a home nor a collection, the association held its first exhibition in a vacant office building in downtown Hickory. There, the Hickory Museum of Art was born, becoming only the second art museum in the state. I think soon after he began painting, he just was obsessed with providing Hickory with a place to show fine art and was determined that that would be his goal in life, was to start an art museum in Hickory. He just got to know the right people at the right time. And Mr. Conroe was extremely um, instrumental in helping him to get to know the right artists and trade works with these artists and get donations from artists. And with his passion for the museum, it was unanimously decided that Paul would hold the title as director of the museum, a position he held until his death in 1959. Paul had uh, three brothers and sisters, one brother, two sisters. There had been seven children, and uh, three of them had died very early. So I think that probably made the, the four of them even closer in supporting each other. And uh, his parents were very supportive. Um, my mother, Frances, helped him hang exhibits. His brother, Bill, who was probably still in his teens, I'm sure, at the time the museum was started, helped as well, his sister, Kathleen. My grandmother would fix him lunches when he came home every day if he wasn't involved in networking or something like that uh, during lunch or going to rotary meetings. Uh, but uh, Paul's father, W.A. Whitener, William, uh, while Paul was sick, opened the museum, closed it, did all the correspondence and the business of the museum every day, of course, in consulting with Paul. and. Uh, really kept the museum open to the public for over two years during that time period. Soon after outgrowing the museum's first home in the Bradshaw Building, the museum was provided with its second location, the W.M. Bryan Home on 3rd Avenue Northwest, where it remained until moving in 1960 to the former office building of Shuford Mills on the corner of 3rd Street and 1st Avenue Northwest. With Paul's legacy to uphold, Harley F. Shuford and a group of civic-minded individuals kicked off a $2.6 million capital drive to turn the old Hickory High School into a regional arts center. And with much support and dedication, the plan was a success and is now the current home of the Hickory Museum of Art. Under Mickey's guidance, the museum received accreditation by the American Association in July of 1991, a goal Paul would have set his sights on. Uh, Mickey was a real vital force in making this museum grow. She was asked to stay on until they could find someone to replace Paul at his death. She stayed for 37 years and just watched it mushroom. We both enjoyed the museum and the progress of it and it was just amazing to see what he could do. Today, the museum is still a vital part of the community by enriching every person's life that walks through its doors. There's a story that my Aunt Nikki likes to tell. It happened when I was a little girl. And the main gallery of the museum, of course, was nothing like the main gallery now. It would probably hold 50 people packed in like sardines with, with all the paintings and everything. And at the evening reception, the floor caved in and the room was packed. And luckily, uh, the Bryan house didn't have a basement, so they didn't fall very far. They just went down about a foot. Nobody hurt. But of course, needless to say, Paul was very upset. As an example of the kind of support Paul could, could garner in the community, one of the museum supporters said, Paul, don't worry about it. No problem. I'll have a crew of people in here tomorrow, and the floor will be fixed. And it was. I think that's really an example of the community support that Paul had, without which he couldn't have done what he did. 
but uh, Paul was a special person and he was able to, um, to attract that kind of support. He, he had a, a vision that cut through all of the red tape, all of the disappointments, the heartbreaks, the setbacks, the traumas of life. And he had that vision to look and see what the museum would be 50 years from now, or from then. And lo and behold, here it is. Everybody's welcome. And I think it's wonderful that there's no charge to come in and enjoy the beauty of the paintings in this museum. He did more than say, let's have an art museum. He pulled it off. So when you ask the question, what is his influence, Paul Whitener is all over this museum. Paul brought a limitless vision and timeless passion to his work as a painter and as the museum's director, which is evident as we stroll the halls and admire the collections of many artists. It's because of his dedication and passion that his legacy will continue to bring art awareness and education to the Hickory community for many generations to come.